En amatör Don Juan tar en chans att gå på vift Han fixar och han trixar, glömmer bort att han är gift Sen står han där med vänster prassel, byxis för allt båg och trassel Ljuger för de båda två i skit. Hello and welcome to Argue With Myself. I apologize first off for the rough sounding audio. I am doing this while out on my job. And so I'm not doing it in a nice quiet area. I'm just doing this on the fly while I'm out on my job. This episode's topic is gonna be on something that has been in the news a lot. And namely, it has to do with the mental health of the President of the United States. So before I get into this, I need to make something clear. This is both about President Trump and not about President Trump. So I don't want people jumping on me and saying, ah, you're being unfair or you're not being fair enough. So I'm gonna make it clear as to what I'm gonna be talking about and how that relates to the president. Pretty much since the founding of the United States, Critics of the president have found a variety of ways to try and discredit them. And so calls from critics of President Trump that he's mentally unfit or he's crazy, narcissist, etc., those aren't exactly new. However, what is new are the calls from therapists, psychiatrists, that he is mentally unfit, that the behavior that they're seeing on TV is reminiscent of things that they've seen through their practice. And that brings up the question of, should the President of the United States be required to undergo a mental wellness, mental fitness checkup each year? I'm going to break this up into three different parts. First, I'm going to talk about the history of presidents and mental health. And this is where I'm also going to say how this is and isn't about Trump. And then second, I'm gonna set down some definitions for the argument. And then third, I'm gonna actually get into the arguing. So first off, let's look at the history of mental health and the presidency. In a study done by Catherine M. Connor and Marvin Schwartz of Duke University, They looked at the biographical information of 37 presidents from 1776 to 1974. They looked at the biographies and the written sources from these presidents to see what there was regarding information about their mental health. They found that there were 18 or 49 presidents who met the criteria suggesting psychiatric disorder. This is depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and alcohol abuse or dependence. Even more importantly, in 10 cases, which was just a little over one fourth of the presidents, there was a disorder that was evident during their time in office, which would have probably impaired their job performance. So this says that not only have we elected presidents before who have been suffering from mental illness, but in some cases it may have actually impaired or affected their ability to perform as president. In that same study of which Jonathan Davidson of Duke University was the primary author, they made some surprising discoveries. They saw, or at least from what they were able to read through biographies, that James Madison, John Quincy Adams, Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln, and Calvin Coolidge suffered from depression. In the case of Abraham Lincoln, it was actually severe enough that he would be bedridden for as long as a week. Theodore Roosevelt appears to have had signs of bipolar disorder with the classic highs of the manic phase and then the lows of the depressive phase. JFK seems to have been at least borderline bipolar disorder, at the very least having a manic disorder. 
And then you have President Reagan, who had been the oldest president to when he was first elected at 69 years old and just like a week or two shy of his 70th birthday. He ended up being diagnosed with Alzheimer's and it was announced after he had left the presidency. But there does seem to be a fair amount of evidence to suggest that he started suffering from the symptoms of it while he was still in his presidency. This is where President Trump comes into the equation. At 70 years old, he is the oldest person that we've ever elected for president. And his father developed Alzheimer's when he was in his 80s. So brings up the question of should it be required that a president undergo testing for mental illness? and that this be done once every year. Okay, time for definitions. I'm gonna be using definitions from the World Health Organization's website on mental disorders, which is a synonym for mental illness. They define mental illness as being characterized by a combination of abnormal thoughts, perceptions, emotions, behavior and relationships with others and because I'm mainly going to be focusing on Alzheimer's or dementia I'm going to give the definition for dementia from the World Health Organization's site it says that dementia is usually of a chronic or progressive nature in which there is a deterioration in cognitive function or the ability to process thought beyond what might be expected from normal aging. It affects memory, thinking, orientation, comprehension, calculation, learning capacity, language, and judgment. The impairment in cognitive function is commonly accompanied and occasionally preceded by a deterioration in emotional control, social behavior, or motivation. Furthermore, dementia is caused by a variety of diseases and injuries that affect the brain, such as Alzheimer's disease or a stroke. All right, on to the main attraction, which is the arguing with myself. I'm going to change it up a little bit for my last one. This time, I'm going to have two heads, if you're watching this on YouTube or just watching the video, have two heads, one with the A standing for affirmative, and then another one, having an O for opposition. I'm also going to throw in an audio cue for people who are just listening to it to make it a little bit easier for when I am switching sides. All right, so first up is the affirmative, supporting why we should require presidents to go through a mental fitness screening each year. So, I think that, yeah, it's pretty important. Reason for that is the fact that presidents are generally elected old. With President Trump, he was elected when he was in, when he was 70. And we know that the deterioration of the brain generally happens at an older age with the onset of Alzheimer's or stroke. We know that this is something that is more likely the older the person is and that it has happened before, or at least there is evidence to say that it has happened before with Reagan. And the president of the United States is in a very important position. They have huge impacts on the economy, on military, on alliances between other countries. And so we want to make sure that they are mentally fit enough to be able to handle the requirements of the office. Opposition. And I oppose this because of two reasons. First off, mental health is still very much stigmatized in the United States. If you remember Barry Goldwater, he was politically damaged by accusations that he was not mentally fit for office. 
And even though a depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive, bipolar, these can all be successfully treated and managed with a combination of therapy and medication, that would still be significantly damaging and political suicide for any politician to just freely admit. I mean, we have so many different kinds of attacks and accusations against political candidates that this would only be opening up another avenue for it. And as such, no politician is going to willingly want to be required to do this. And politicians are the ones who make the laws. Second reason that I don't think that we should require the president to do this is that there will be no outcome, at least as far as what I can see. I mean, are we going to have to require the results of the examination be made public? If so, what, like, how does that work with patient confidentiality? I mean, should they be forced to give up that privacy as a result of the office that they're in? Also, what is this going to mean? Like, is the president going to be forced to resign or step down if it reaches a certain stage? How do we define that stage? Is it going to be up to Congress to define that stage and then to force the president to step down? I mean, the Congress right now can barely get its own pants on. I really doubt that anything would come of this and that it would just become a political weapon. Affirmative. Well, I think that, yeah, as a result of being the president, there should be certain things that are given up in terms of privacy just because of the amount of power that they hold. I mean, they aren't doing this for money, or they shouldn't at least be doing it for fame, glory. They're doing it ultimately to serve the people. And so, yeah, I think that should be posted publicly. And if that does result in the loss of privacy, then it's just something that happens with the position of being the president. And as to the terms of it being used as a political weapon, I think that, yeah, that is definitely going to be a risk. However, this isn't something that would just necessarily be nice to have. This is something that will have important effects if ignored. We need to know if the president is suffering from symptoms of Alzheimer's or if they've had a stroke that's then affected their cognitive abilities. That's very important information for the public to have. And it's why we have vice president. You know, the mental disorders or mental illness is no different from a physical illness or disability. If the president has a heart attack and is then forced to be in the hospital or is put into a life-threatening situation as a result of a disease, that's the reason we have a vice president is to step up and so the mental illness or disorder should be treated no differently from how a physical illness or disorder should be treated. Opposition. I think that another larger issue that needs to be looked at is over how this could even be done. Who's going to be the doctor or doctors that does this analysis or does the checkup on the president. Is it going to be the president's handpicked doctor? Is it going to be Congress choosing the doctor? Is it going to be picked from an independent council to overlook the president? Part of the problem is that this is going to be political. And the president choosing their own doctor, you run the very severe risk that that doctor is going to just pass over on very significant issues because, you know, they were chosen by the president. It's also possible that if it's chosen by Congress and it's in Congress or the party controlling Congress is the president's party, then it'll be the same thing. They'll choose a doctor or doctors who will be light on the president and may be willing to not state things that could be issues. 
Whereas if it's chosen by the opposition party, they're going to want a doctor that's going to be overly critical because they want to damage the president. They want to make things stronger so that they can use those for political points when they're out campaigning or fundraising. And if it's going to be by a separate independent council, like how do you even get that going? Part of the issue is that we don't have this set aside in the Constitution already. And so what we're left on is to rely on the mechanisms that are already in place. But those mechanisms only work if Congress is willing to function. And we haven't had a really functioning Congress for the last few years. And so I don't think that you're going to be ever able to ever get this working because it's far too likely to be used as a political weapon. And none of the parties and the politicians want to get started on this because they see how easily it could be abused. Okay, uh, I think that will be it for this topic. I realized that I was kind of going around in circles there towards the end and just repeat myself over and over. And as much as I love the sound of my own voice, I don't love it that much. If you want to learn more about this, I'd actually really recommend the book A First Rate Madness, Uncovering the Links Between Leadership and Mental Illness by Nasir Gami. And I actually did read this book. It argued, or the author argues, that some of our greatest presidents have been great because of their mental illness and that some of our most recent presidents have not been great or have not been able to cope with some of the situations that came up because they didn't have a mental illness. And so it's actually a really interesting theory. I'd recommend reading it if you want to. If you want to hear more about other topics or other public speaking tips, then please subscribe or follow me or do whatever you can. I appreciate it. And I will see you all next time. And in the meantime, I hope that you have a good time. Snälla Svensson Snälla Svensson